power on the computer, the installation media is read, and Windows begins to load the files needed for the install procedure. As you'll see, waiting is the primary task you'll have during the installation. As most of the OS setup is conducted after Windows is installed, and you log on for the first time. Once the files are finished loading, Windows boots to the installation wizard to walk you through the installation process. In the first screen, you select the language Windows should use for the install, the time and currency format, and the type of keyboard you will be using. The next screen has the option to install Windows Now. You can also repair your computer or view information you should know before you start the installation. This information includes system requirements such as CPU, RAM, and disk minimum and recommended requirements, and things you should check before you begin, such as application compatibility. Once you're confident that you're ready, click Install Now. On the next screen, you can select the specific version of Windows you wish to install such as Standard, Enterprise, or Data Center, and you have the option of a full or server core installation. Depending on your media, the choices may vary. I'll choose a standard full installation. Next, you accept the license terms. If you're installing from a system boot of the installation media, you won't have the option to upgrade, and the choice is grayed out. A clean installation uses the custom installation option. Next, you choose where you want Windows to be installed. If you only have one disk with no partitions, you can just click Next. For other options, click Drive Options. Here you can create, delete, and format partitions, and load new drivers if necessary. Next, you wait while Windows copies files and performs the installation. Depending on the speed of your computer, this part usually takes 15 minutes to an hour. This movie has cut out most of the waiting time. Your machine will reboot at least once before you finally get a prompt to change the administrator password. You must enter and confirm your password, and then you are presented with the Windows Server 2008 desktop. The initial configuration task screen runs automatically, prompting you to perform a number of initial setup tasks, such as setting the time zone, configuring networking, changing the computer name, setting up and installing automatic updates, adding roles and features, and so forth. Setting the time zone is important because Active Directory authentication depends on all domain controllers having the correct time, date, and time zone set. Servers should have a static IP address, and you can set that under Configure Networking. You should also set a valid default gateway and DNS server address. Next, you should give a good descriptive name to your server, especially if it will run any specific applications. You can use something like Server 1 if you only have one or two servers, as I'm doing here. If it will be a member of a domain, you can join it to a domain here as well. You must restart the server after a name or domain membership change. Configure automatic updates next so that your server gets the latest patches and security updates. You can simply enable automatic updates, but for servers, you should manually configure them. If Windows installs updates automatically, the default option, your server may restart after some updates are installed, which you probably don't want to occur unless you are prepared for it. A good choice is to have Windows download the updates while letting you choose when to install them. You can also include recommended updates, which are not critical for operation or security. You're finally ready to install roles and features such as Active Directory, DNS, and file and print sharing to put your server to work. When you close the initial configuration task screen, Server Manager starts automatically. Server Manager is the central management console in Windows Server 2008 where you can manage installed roles and features, perform diagnostics, review system configuration, and configure your storage. Now you're ready to start managing your server.